Welcome back to the Lasting Smile podcast. I'm Dr. Frank Lamar. I'm with our clinical lab director, Dr. Julian Canejo. Welcome back to the Lasting Smile. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Uh, great to be here and uh, excited for the topics that we'll be discussing. Uh, the surgical aspect of full arch is ever changing. And I guess just from a, from a high level, let's just, let's just talk about what are the options. If I'm a, a full arch provider and I'm, and I'm getting ready to do full arch, maybe for the first time, what are the options available for me? Mm -hmm. And then later we'll just dive a little deeper into each of them. Yeah, sure. So mainly we have three different approaches starting with the um, non-restrictive surgical guides, which is more of a freehand procedure. And what we have been doing for years is creating a, a duplicate of the existing denture and uh, using it as a reference to place the implants in the bone. Okay, gotcha. So we've got a non-restrictive guide, mm -hmm. such as a denture with a window in it. Correct. And let's talk about number two. Number two would be um, guided surgery. Uh, nowadays, industry refers to as static surgery. So uh, this means that uh, we're going to be able to drill through this surgical guide where the implants will end up being in the exact position as they were planned and, of course, in harmony with the final prosthetic plan. So that's one of um, the most exciting techniques, personally, that I like to use. And, um, you know, I, I refer to that as stackable guides, right? Yeah, correct. Stackable guides and w static guides or attached guides. Yeah. yeah. So nowadays, with further evolution, we have the stackable surgical guides, right? That we can place this um, initial uh, guide to the bone and start with a bone reduction to create the necessary prosthetic space. So after doing this uh, removal of the bone, of the excess of the bone, then we're going to place a second component that would be the um, drill guide. And through this drill guide, that's where we're going to actually place the implants. And the great advantage from these uh, stackable surgical guides is that we can also place on top of this ones the uh, provisional, and it makes the entire therapy uh, much more uh, time efficient. Yeah, that's been a really great evolution of what we do. And we'll dive deeper into that. So we have our non-restrictive guides, we have our stackable guides, and what's the third option that doctors are really sort of looking at and kicking the tires on these days? Yeah, and the third option is um, robotic surgery, right? Navigation surgery. So basically, these uh, newer technologies uh, let you um, actually navigate through the patient's um, three-dimensional image and place those implants uh, in real time while uh, evaluating and observing where the, the bone is. And also now we've um, developed more the, the protocol so we can as well um, visualize where the prosthetics would be. So um, it could make the, the process um, also very um, efficient time-wise. Most of us thought, oh, well, we're, we're, our freehand surgery is great. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, uh, once you do guided surgery, whether it be stackable guides or um, or robotic surgery, you're never going back to freehand, are you? Yeah, no, you'll keep it as a, as a plan B, as yeah. we said. Um, yes, because with uh, the stackable uh, surgical guides now, we can assure that ideal prosthetically driven concept where the implants will be merging uh, at the uh, center of the occlusal surfaces or at the cingulum on the uh, anterior teeth and that whenever we are lacking prosthetic space, we're gonna address that before placing the implant. So uh, the bone reduction guides have actually been a, a game changer in full arch. Uh, when we call this podcast, The Lasting Smile, mm -hmm. it's because there are things we know we need to do to make sure that our final prosthetics last. Yeah, our absolutely. patients expect them to last. The number one liability I have found in the cases we've done, we've done thousands of cases over the years. The cases that have trouble are the cases where we don't have enough prosthetic space and we have material fatigue over time. And I don't care what materials you use, if you don't have the space, you don't have a lasting smile. So bone reduction, absolutely critical, and we have parameters for that. Now, um, going back to the stackable surgical guides, Another huge advantage that they offer is that once you place the drill guide, 
after doing the bone reduction and you start doing your osteotomies through the drill guide, we are not angulating as we could do by freehand. So this creates a cleaner osteotomy that can lead to a higher insertion torque of that mm -hmm. implant, which uh, nowadays it's a huge aspect that we need to be as efficient as possible because that will lead into sending the patient with an immediate loaded uh, provisional. Yeah, so guided surgery, whether it be with stackable guides or robotic surgery, gives us more precise osteotomies, gives us more precise positioning of those osteotomies. And, you know, I think from a surgical standpoint, right, if you know where the anatomic limitations are, where are, where are, the, where are the mental nerves? Mm -hmm. how, how, what's my tolerance? How close can I get? Where are the, where are the sinuses? Mm -hmm. How close can I get? You're, what you find that is with guided surgery, you're actually maximizing these areas. You're, you're getting the most out of your, uh, you know, uh, Mish used to call it the AP spread, right? Mm -hmm. But really getting the biomechanics set up ideally as opposed to kind of eyeballing it. And the less um, experienced surgeons will always err on the side of stay away. Sure. And when you stay away from anatomic landmarks, you're not taking advantage of the surgical Exist. field. Yeah, and, and that happens to all of us when we're doing freehand compared to a guided surgery, right? With freehand, I might have that safety calculated area, right? That most of the time could be more than needed. And when we do this digital virtual planning, then we can maximize the available bone and improve the distribution of, of the implants for sure. Yeah. Let's go to um, the robotic surgery. Let's talk a little bit about robotic surgery because it is probably one of the most common questions that clinicians ask is, should I, should I be ready for robotic surgery? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as any new technology, right, um, or newer technology, it needs a learning curve, right? Um, newer technologies uh, start being more uh, expensive, and then as there's more competition in the market, then they all become more um, affordable. So I think that definitely robotic surgery is going to get more and more uh, used um, worldwide. What I um, consider the most important aspect of robotic surgery, as we mentioned briefly, was the uh, quality of that uh, CBCT, right? And also how well the markers for recognition are uh, stabilized, mm -hmm. because those are the two mechanisms that robotic systems use to help you have um, live surgery while being able to uh, visualize the anatomical uh, landmarks. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've watched many robotic surgeries and, and uh, by the way, I, I agree with you completely. Uh, where robotic surgery is going will only get better and better and easier and easier and less expensive. It will become uh, like a lot of things demonetized over time. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I have noticed is, is that robotic surgery is beautiful bone reduction, beautiful osteotomies. The accuracy is there, much like stackable guides. Um, but it does take a team effort to run a robot, currently to run one of these robotic units such as Yomi. Um, it really is impressive when you see a team of three or if not four people in that operatory coordinated. It's a bit of a dance to be able to use that great technology and uh, have the clinician, um, you know, on the other end um, use the robot properly. But the ultimate goal is accurate osteotomy is very precise, accurate bone reduction. And I think both stackable guides and robotic surgery are doing both of those things really well. Um, but with robotic surgery, you have to know that you do not get an immediate provisional as part of that surgical technique. That tends to surprise a lot of our clinicians. Mm -hmm. They they buy a, 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 uh, uh, a robotic unit, and then, they, and then they are now looking at, well, now what do I do? Mm -hmm. how, do I, how do I have the patient leave that day with a provisional? 
Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So um, that's why um, at Highbridge we have uh, now two protocols for immediate full large provisionals. Being the first one, the um, pickup on top of your stackable surgical guide. The benefit of doing this uh, pickup with the stackable uh, guide system is that we are assuring that we actually pick up that provisional in the correct three-dimensional uh, position. I think we've all um, converted a denture into mm. an immediately those are, loaded provisional. Those are, those are tough days when exactly. we had to use a denture and pick it up and in the mouth. Not easy. No, a lot of work and, and we can all achieve it, right? But the occlusion was um, a, a big issue. We had to go through more significant adjustments. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, with the exact stackable guide system, we're able to make that pickup much faster and at the correct position. So the occlusal adjustments are less. We weaken less the provisional as well. So that's uh, one of the protocols that we have. Now, as you were mentioning with uh, robotics, right? We have to um, collect the information of the final position of those implants and come up with a plan that is fast enough to get the patient out the same day with a fixed provisional. So what uh, we have is the on-demand design services, right? So the clinician will use the um, robotic system, will place the implants, and then they will make a quick uh, capture of the end result of the um, final position of those implants. And then uh, one of the designers will be um, scheduled on demand to receive that file, design this nice provisional, and send the file back. Because what we're seeing is that many clinicians in the world of uh, full arch are um, buying 3D printers, so they will receive the file and they will print that provisional in-house and they can uh, deliver the provisional the same day with robotics. So um, we have uh, both workflows um, available and I think that it's nice that nowadays we have the option of, of selecting what fits better. Maybe if you're an oral surgeon, you uh, have a preference, let's say for robotic surgery. If uh, I have a prosthodontic um, background and training in, in surgi surgical um, implant approaches, I might prefer the exact static surgical guide. And um, with one or the other, we can assure a high quality provisional same day. So I think the options that are here today, whether it be on-demand, in-office printing option, uh, or a stackable guide where you're picking it up same day, mm -hmm. both of those options are really have made that immediate load option um, just very doable and very easy compared to what we used to do. Yeah, um, to, to finish I would say that still the high insertion torque and that strong primary stability of the implants is the key factor that we should always aim and, and keep that in mind to be able to load those implants. Well, I think, I think we've given everybody a really good uh, overview of the three surgical options. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk more about this idea of one stage full arch surgery, mm -hmm. extraction and implant same day versus a two stage approach. Okay. All right. Thanks That's very great. much. We'll be right back.